Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today shall we talk about the 1986 American sci-fi horror film The Fly, directed and co-written by David Cronenberg. The film stars Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis, and John Getz. It is loosely based on George Langelane's 1957 short story of the same name and the 1958 film adaptation of the same name. The film was a commercial success, grossing $60.6 .6 million at the box office against its $9 million budget and received critical acclaim for its special effects and Goldblum's performance. The movie's score was composed by Howard Shore and the makeup of effects were created by Chris Wallace and Steven Dupuy, resulting in their winning an Academy Award for the Best Makeup, the only Oscar won by a film directed by Cronenberg. The Fly has a sequel directed by Chris Wallace, which was released in 1989 called The Fly 2. The film tells the story of Seth Brundle, a brilliant but eccentric scientist who meets science journalist Ronnie at a press event. He invites her to his laboratory and asks her to document his invention. Two pods that can teleport objects between them. They experiment with the invention and form a relationship. However, after Seth teleports himself, he unknowingly carries a housefly with him, resulting in a fusion of their DNA. Seth's body begins to deteriorate and he becomes increasingly aggressive and unstable as he transforms into a human fly hybrid. Ronnie struggles to cope with the tragic loss of her loved one and the man she once knew. The makeup effects in the film were designed to show Seth's great gradual transformation into a Brundle fly creature. The intention was to give Seth a bruised and cancerous look that progressively worsens and as his altered genome asserts itself. The creature was designed to appear asymmetrical and deformed, not at all a viable or robust organism. The transformation was broken up into seven distinct stages, with Goldblum spending many hours in the makeup chair for the later stages. Overall, the fly is a tragic love story with elements of science fiction and horror. It uses references of subliminal messaging to express Seth's transformation similar to cancer, AIDS, and drug addictions. The film emphasizes the love between two individuals and the devastating loss that comes with a tragic era. The seven stages of the transformation were as follows. Subtle rash-like discoloration that leads to facial lesions and sores with tiny fly hairs dotting Goldblum's face, in addition to the patch of fly hairs growing out of the wound on Brundle back. Stage 2, similar to stage 1, but with more pronounced skin discoloration and lesions. 3, piecemeal prosthetics covering Goldblum's face and later his arms, feet, and torso. 4, prosthetic teeth, wigs with ball spots, and more pronounced prosthetics on Goldblum's face. 4B, deleted from the film. This variant of stage 4 was seen only in the monkey cat scene and required Goldblum to wear the first of two full body foam latex suits as Brundle stopped wearing clothing. 5. The second full body suit with more exaggerated deformities and distorting contact lenses that made one eye look larger than the other. 6. The final Brundlefly creature referred to as the space bug by the crew depicted by various partial and full body cable and rod control puppets. 7. Another puppet that represented the, the mortally injured Brundlefly telepod fusion creature initially dubbed the Brundle Boo and later the Brundle Thing by the crew as seen in the film's final moments. The Fly even has a comic book series. IDW Publishing, a comic book publisher, launched the Fly Outbreak in March 2015, which is a five-part comic book miniseries. The comic book is written by Brandon Seyfert and serves as a direct sequel to the storyline of The Fly 2. The plot revolves around Martin, Seth Rundle's son, who accidentally unleashes a transgenic epidemic while trying to cure Anton Bartok, to whom he had earlier transmitted his mutant genes towards the end of The Fly 2. The opening title card for the movie The Fly was initially created for the film's teaser, with the idea of it fluttering in. Director David Cronenberg liked this so much that he decided to incorporate it into the final version of the film. Cronenberg went through several auditions for the role of Ronnie, but he was looking for an actress who could match Jeff Goldblum, Seth 
Brundle in terms of eccentricities and stature. Eventually, Cronenberg and Goldblum decided to consider Goldblum's girlfriend at the time, Gina Davis. David Cronenberg was initially dissatisfied with the early designs of the telepod, which resembled glass showers, as they did in the original film. The director found this design boring and uninteresting. The breakthrough came when Cronenberg and production designer Carol Spire visited his garage and saw his Ducati motorcycle. This inspired the idea of incorporating a more mechanical element into the telepods. The finalized design of the telepods features the cylinder head structure of the Ducati motorcycle turned upside down, giving them a unique and distinctive appearance. Cronenberg was pleased with the final design as it added an extra layer of visual interest and complexity to the film's iconic teleportation devices. During the final stages of Seth's transformation into the Brundle Fly in the movie, the flight director David Cronenberg wanted to ensure that the creature retained some form of human emotion, even though Seth was completely gone. According to Cronenberg, the creature's articulation and expressiveness were essential, even without the ability to speak. To achieve this, he decided to give the creature big versions of Jeff's eyes, providing it with a more human element so that it could communicate emotions to the audience. By doing this, Cronenberg believed that the audience would be more invested in the story and the Brundlefly would be more than just a grotesque monster. And I kind of felt it too. As you're watching the film, you kind of sympathize and you're like, you know, you want to put this guy out of his fucking misery. That's what I would have done, but you know, that's something else. That's just my opinion. Well, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comment section, have you seen The Fly? You have to have seen The Fly by now. 1986 version. Please let me know in the comments, what do you think of The Fly? Do you think it's a classic? Can they make a remake? Can it do good in this modern age? You let me know, folks. Thank you so much. It's Rich Richardson. Take care. Entertainment brain. God bless.